appreciate it so much. No problem. Hi, thanks for joining us today for this special webinar. We say all of our webinars are special. This is really for the new members. How can TechSoup support my nonprofit? And that's what we want to share with you today. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I had the pleasure of introducing our presenters. But before I do that, I want to discuss how you can engage today. We already know you're going to be engaging in the Q&A section. I did turn the closed caption on. So for those of you who need it, it'll be there. We will share the presentation and the video within 48 hours. So look for that in your email. Now I'm going to move out of the way and introduce our speakers. Today we have with us Nick Finn. He's the senior director here at TechSoup. And we have Kevin Mohall. He's the TechSoup customer success manager. And then we have the beautiful Kelly Garrett. She's the associate manager of TechSoup client services. So Nick, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks. Well, hello, everybody. Um, and good morning, at least from the West Coast, which is where I am. Although I don't live directly in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's one of the classic scenes here. Um, I'm in Oakland, California. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today. Um, this Today's webinar is specifically designed to help nonprofits that have just joined TechSoup to learn more about how TechSoup can support your nonprofit, what we do here, um, and uh, how to engage with us and, and how we can be helpful to you. Um, and uh, we invite you to drop any questions that come up for you into chat during the course of the webinar. Um, I'm going to lead us through several elements of the catalog. Um, and then toward the end of the catalog, um, Kevin and Kelly are both going to jump in here as well and, and do a little deeper dives into some specific areas that are important for um, new folks at TechSoup to understand. Um, but before we get going, I'm going to start with a quick buzzword alert because anytime you're talking about nonprofits and te technology, um, there are a couple of phrases that pop up that may not necessarily be um, intuitive for folks. They may be the first time you've heard them. So I'm just going to call them out right here on the front end. And that way there's no questions when we run into them later. Um, the first buzzword is, is digital transformation, which you may, you may hear in grant applications. You may hear blogs and folks online talking about digital transformation. Um, and some folks may know exactly what that is, but I don't want to assume that, that that people do. And so just in a very simple way, digital transformation really is just the process of becoming a more tech savvy nonprofit. It's um, the willingness to walk away from old paper and pencil systems and to adopt new systems that are more secure, faster, easier to use, um, and that support your nonprofit. Um, in, in ways that the modern world kind of requires. Um, a second buzzword that you may hear, hear bandied around is the term civil society. Um, and really in simple way, civil society is just non-governmental people and organizations. It's the folks on this webinar who are working to help their communities to make a better world and a better planet. Um, but you'll hear civil society pop up in a lot of places when it comes to technology and nonprofits. And then finally, something we'll touch on a few times during today's conversation is cloud adoption. And cloud adoption is really just the process of moving towards using more modern web-based tools. You can think of cloud adoption as being part of digital transformation. But the main thing is just don't be intimidated by these phrases when they pop up. Sometimes they can feel a little bit inside ball as we sometimes call it, but these are the simple things of what, what they really mean. Now let's really get into the meat of what is TechSoup? How can we be helpful to you? Um, and uh, what can you use TechSoup for? So let's start, first of all, <clears throat> like you, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization in the United States, and we are also part of a global network. We are not just a US-based organization. We work around the world with um, thousands of other nonprofits, um, and around the world, our mission is the same, which is to help nonprofits use technology to build a more equitable planet. Um, and 
The reason TechSoup plays an important role is because, let's face it, technology is not always the most intuitive thing. For some folks it is, but not for all of us. Um, and nonprofits already have a lot of work on their plate. Um, and sometimes knowing which technology to be using for what process can be difficult to figure out. Um, TechSoup is here to help you with that process. We are here to help you accomplish your mission and to use technology to do that. Um, how do we do that work specifically? <clears throat> well, we host a catalog of affordable technology products from major technology brands. These are just a few of them, but Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, many, many more. Um, and that catalog is one of the primary places where nonprofits engage with TechSoup. Um, and we're going to look a little more deeply at what that catalog is. And um, in addition to those technology products, TechSoup also now provides services to support nonprofits in the adoption of technology, when we're troubleshooting technology, if you need help with the long-term management of your technology stack, TechSoup can help you with that. Um, and then we also have numerous very specialized services, which we'll get into a little bit more later in this presentation. But so we've got products and we've got services. Those are the two big things that we really engage with nonprofits around. Um, and then finally, we're also a source of education and training and courses for nonprofit staff and volunteers. Because even when you've got technology um, and your nonprofit is using it, there is staff turnover. You recruit new volunteers from the community. And some of them have great technical skills already, which is great, and they can really help. Um, but other folks need some help getting up to speed on particular pieces of technology, or they want to learn how to use a specific piece of technology because they think that can really help the nonprofit. So products, services, and education. That's the, that's the trio of things that TechSoup is probably best known for in terms of how we support nonprofits. Um, we also do our own grant-based programming, like many of the people on this call. Um, and uh, we're not going to go into that piece of TechSoup very deeply today, um, but we are, when I say just like you, in the sense that we're a 501c3, we also, you know, run our own programming like the nonprofits on this webinar do, um, and that's grant-funded programming, and it covers all sorts of different areas, um, but there's some really cool work that TechSoup does, and, and as you start to use TechSoup and engage with us, you, you'll be exposed to some of that as well. So let's talk about being a 501c3 in a global network. Um, like I said, like you, we are a 501c3. And we really do have a perspective. And our perspective is that technology is a very, very powerful tool. And we have seen over time how nonprofits have been able to use that tool to solve really big issues and make progress on critical questions that they face. Um, and that's, again, not just in the U.S., but around the world. Um, and so to go back to one of those buzzwords I mentioned, we believe tech can help civil society to build a better planet and a better future for all of us. That's our perspective. We, we really do believe that that's something we can accomplish. Um, but there are some blockers to accomplishing that. And one of the things that we know is that cost can be a major blocker around technology. Technology requires a lot of research and development. Um, there are specialized skills that go into building software stacks in particular. Um, and all of this really combines to make tech in some cases extremely expensive. Um, so one of the things TechSoup tries to do, and we'll talk about this more as we get to the catalog view, is uh, we actually negotiate on behalf of nonprofits with big tech companies. And we try to provide pricing through the TechSoup website to nonprofits, pricing that is not the same as what you would just see on the open market. Uh, the prices are lower. And um, the reason we do that is because we know nonprofits, because again, we are one, 
we don't operate with the same budgets that giant corporations and big businesses do. We, our entire revenue structure is very different. Um, we depend on grants. We depend on fundraising. Um, and that means we're always stretched thin. We're always trying to do more with less. Um, and that means that uh, when it comes to getting technology, cost can be a real blocker. So TechSoup really tries to negotiate pricing that helps nonprofits to acquire that technology. Um, in the past, we have seen that some nonprofits have saved as much as $18,000 over the course of their lifetime relationship with TechSoup. Um, that number changes uh, over time, uh, a lot of the time because, you know, the entire way we pay for technology is really changing these days. In the old days of TechSoup in the early 2000s, um, a lot of what we did was uh, provide, you know, CD-ROMs, discs, compact discs of software. Um, we would FedEx those out or deliver them by hand to nonprofits who needed them. Um, but of course, these days, th that's not how you get software anymore. In, in almost every case, you're downloading it directly off the internet. Um, you are paying uh, subscription fees versus like a one-time fee to buy that CD-ROM. Um, so even as the cost and how the money works in technology changes, technology uh, TechSoup itself is evolving as well. And as I mentioned before, another big blocker for the use of technology is that expertise and training, which is why we try to provide that to nonprofits. Um, and uh, hopefully there's uh, some courses and trainings in our catalog that your nonprofit can take advantage of. So now let's go straight into the actual product catalog on TechSuit.org. And um, most folks on this call have already been through the qualification process at TechSoup. You know, you've, you've signed up, you've created an account on TechSoup.org, um, and uh, you've been confirmed as an eligible nonprofit of 501c3 who can use our services. Um, that's who this webinar specifically is for. Um, so if there are folks on this call who have not yet gone through the qualification process, I really want to encourage you to make sure you take that step. It's, it's important. You cannot use the catalog until you've taken that step of um, submitting your information to TechSoup to get qualified and become a qualified member. But if you have done that and you go to TechSoup.org and you're interested in looking at the products that are now available to you and your nonprofit at a, at a reduced price from what you would see on the open market. You know, what you want to do is navigate to the product catalog. And I'm just highlighting it here in our website navigation. Um, and there are two places on the homepage where you can get to the product catalog. There's in that black bar at the top. And then also this, uh, this orange button kind of at the top of the screen, but in the middle right there. Both of those take you to the homepage of the product catalog. And I'm going to focus now on three specific brands that we really find over time most nonprofits gravitate towards first. So if you're thinking about where your next tech budget items are uh, devoted to, um, I can tell you that one of the biggest brands that we work with and have worked with for years now is Microsoft. Um, and that should come as no surprise. Of course, you know, they, they build Windows 11 and all the Windows versions before that, Microsoft Office and Word and Excel. You know, these are all programs and productivity suites that um, we've all used as we've come up during the digital age. Um, and, uh, you know, we've probably seen them evolve in, in little ways, some good, some bad. I'm sure lots of us remember the animated paperclip back in the old days of Microsoft, where you could ask the paperclip how to do things. You know, we, we don't do that anymore. Um, but our modern relationship with Microsoft really is much more around the cloud uh, offers that Microsoft provides. And so I'm going to go straight into that first. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, instead of like buying CD-ROMs now, where it's you load onto each computer, um, we're downloading these productivity suites off the interweb. And, and Microsoft these days really has folks focused on Microsoft 365, um, which is the 
a downloadable suite of applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of those that, that lots of nonprofits use and, and bundled with Windows itself. Um, and as you can imagine, there are lots of different types of licenses that are available for Microsoft 365. Um, there are even in some cases, some zero cost versions of those licenses that are available. Uh, and later on in this webinar, Kevin Mohall is going to talk about those a little bit and just give folks a little bit more feeling for, for what's available there. Um, and as Aretha mentioned at the front, we're going to send everybody this deck after the webinar is concluded. And I just want to highlight for you that where you see this blue text with the underline, that's a live link in the tech in the deck. So you will be able to click on these links in this deck and uh, you know go straight to the pages on the techsoup.org site that help you, you know, understand better what the offers are that are available to you, which not, you know, what types of nonprofits you're using, which licenses, et cetera. Um, if your nonprofit is not yet ready to move to that cloud-based Microsoft um, environment, um, we also do have what is called the on-premises version of Office. On-premises means, you know, it lives on your local computer, um, and uh, it's not constantly updated from the cloud. There are some updates that come, but those are limited. And at a certain point, there are no more updates for that platform. Um, so Microsoft on-premises, Microsoft Office on-premises is available through TechSoup for each license is uh, $222 um, with so and that includes software assurance. Software assurance is a three-year grace period during which time if there's updates, et cetera, to the, to the offer, then you, know, you would have access to those as well. Um, you can also decide not to get the version with software assurance, and then you can get Office um, on-premises for $118 per license. And then the third big element of Microsoft that most nonprofits are asking about right now um, are it is Windows 11, right? So not, not even new news anymore, um, but plenty of folks have not yet made the transition to Windows 11. Um, but uh, TechSoup does uh, provide nonprofits with licenses to the full installation of Windows 11. That's where the link in this presentation will take you. Um, there are also uh, upgrade versions of it available, um, but again, we're not going to go full deep into that during this webinar, um, but Windows 11 is available through TechSoup for nonprofits, um, and I encourage you to check that out. So that's Microsoft. Um, the next big one, especially for folks on this call who may be communications oriented or fundraising oriented, where you really have to think about developing print and web materials to share out to supporters and potential donors. Adobe has been one of the pioneers in digital communications um, and for sure one of the major partners of TechSoup that lots and lots, I mean thousands of nonprofits have used Adobe products from TechSoup. Um, Creative Cloud is probably the most popular piece of the Adobe catalog at TechSoup. It is the suite of programs that graphic designers and web designers rely on to, to make great looking things like InDesign and Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, and uh, that's available through TechSoup, very popular. And then the other big one is Acrobat Pro DC, um, which is the cloud version of Acrobat, right? making PDFs, editing PDFs, controlling access to PDFs. Um, those PDFs really are the modern standard for document management. You know, we're not, we don't really send each other Word documents that much anymore. Folks share PDFs. It's just a little easier uh, to control the content of a PDF. And um, Acrobat Pro DC is the, is the program for that. The third major brand that I see a lot of activity around in the TechSoup catalog is Intuit, and specifically it's QuickBooks. Um, and that's for the finance folks on this call, right? 
Um, one of the big lessons that we saw once again with the onset of COVID was how many nonprofits had not yet made the move from a paper and pencil accounting system to a digital accounting system. Um, and I literally have a personal friend who helps run uh, books at a, at a nonprofit um, up in Berkeley. Um, and uh, because that nonprofit was still running uh, paper and pencil accounting systems, um, but people could not be in the office together because of the COVID restrictions, they were running 24-hour cycles at that nonprofit where people would come in for eight-hour blocks and then leave so that somebody else could come in for an eight-hour block and work on the books. And obviously, that's a terrible way to be doing business. Um, and so uh, more and more nonprofits have gravitated to digital formats of uh, retaining and controlling their finance information. QuickBooks is by far the most popular offer we have in the catalog to help nonprofits manage those finances. Um, it's uh, the online advanced version. I saw pricing for at 160 a year right now for nonprofits. Um, and uh, going back to that buzzword I mentioned at the top, cloud adoption, um, QuickBooks really is phasing out what's called the desktop version. You might think of that as the on-premises version, really. Um, but they are phasing that out in favor of the online version of QuickBooks. Um, but that is a perennially popular part of the TechSoup catalog. And definitely encourage folks to take a look at that and think about whether their own finance systems need, need any kind of updating and, you know, from the tech perspective. Um, Microsoft, Adobe, and Intuit are the top end of what are most popular, but we have hundreds of other brands in the TechSoup catalog as well that provide all sorts of different technology products. Um, and uh, I'll be honest, I grabbed 12 here where I could easily get super good crisp logos, but there are many, many, many more. Um, and I encourage you to really just tool through that catalog. You can look at it from the perspective of the brand of the partner. You can look at it based on the perspective of like, what kind of products are you thinking about? Is it finance? Is it communications and design? Or is it something totally different? There's a lot in there. And uh, if you think there's a product that should be in there that's not, we definitely welcome feedback from nonprofits. We really want to hear from you about um, platforms and technology products that you think other nonprofits could benefit from as well. Uh, we have a constant effort to reach out to tech companies who provide products that nonprofits might want, um, to talk with them about uh, how they could become part of the TechSoup catalog to go through that process together. Now, the next thing I wanted to focus on, of course, is like technology is not just software. Uh, it's also hardware. And anybody who's tried to acquire hardware over the last couple of years knows that the supply chain issues that have come with the global pandemic have really made it difficult in some cases to get um, the hardware that folks really need to keep their nonprofit moving forward. We've experienced similar issues here at TechSoup as well. But we've maintained a great set of relationships with several brands and a particular program that are worth mentioning here. Um, you know, I want to call out for you that the hardware catalog itself is a little tricky to find. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you exactly how you get to it. But here, again, is the URL in the deck. So when you get this deck after today's webinar, you can just click on that to get to it as well. Um, but the basic hardware categories that you can access through TechSoup are, include laptops and desktops, pretty standard stuff. Uh, we have a lot of server and networking products as well from Cisco and Cisco Meraki in particular. Um, we do carry internet hotspots, which for some folks are extremely helpful if, they have area, if they're working in areas where internet coverage is a little spotty sometimes. Um, and then we have small items like headsets and mouses and keyboards and all that kind of stuff. So um, these are all available through the TechSoup catalog. Um, we also have great partnerships with Dell, Lenovo, and HP. 
um, with access to uh, specific uh, pricing that they offer for nonprofits available through our catalog. Um, and then one thing I really want to highlight here is um, TechSoup uh, runs what's called a refurbished uh, computers program. In fact, we helped pioneer this. Um, and uh, one of our now retired uh, staff members, a guy named Jim Lynch, who I had the pleasure of working with for a couple of years here at TechSoup, um, he really drove this program for many, many years and has received awards for his efforts to make technology greener, uh, the refurbished program basically takes computers that are no longer brand new. In other words, they've had a prior owner. Um, and then we work with several vendors to make sure that those computers are still, you know, usable. In fact, more than usable, like they're still a modern machine. Um, they have the memory, they have the processing power to manage, you know, modern cloud-based programs. Um, but they are, you know, gently used, as they say in other industries, um, and we make sure that these computers are up to par, they get um, certified as refurbished, and then, of course, their price point is a little bit lower than what you might pay when you buy a desktop or a laptop brand new. Um, and for nonprofits, again, with cost being such a major limiter sometimes, that refurbished program has proven to be extremely popular. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. And again, that's a live link in the deck and you'd be able to click through to that. Um, here's the slide I promised to share with you about how to get to the hardware page. Um, you have to click on the product catalog page first. I'm just showing you up here. And then you'll see over on the left, there is the link to the hardware page itself. Um, and, uh, you know, Probably we can do a better job ourselves of, of putting a navigation where you might more intuitively find it, but um, shouldn't be too hard. And again, like I said in that prior slide, that link is live, so you could just click straight through there. All right, so those are the technology products that TechSoup makes available to nonprofits through that catalog. Again, at a price point that we think is, is really helpful to nonprofits versus the full market rate that you might pay on everything else. Um, but one thing that we also know about technology is it's not just get the product and then it's all over and you've got what you need and move on. Um, more and more technology relies on a whole host of backend services to help folks implement the technology, frankly, to even choose the right one in the first place, um, and then to manage it, to troubleshoot it. Um, and to make sure that it's operating as it needs to operate to keep your nonprofit doing what it's doing. Um, TechSoup is constantly pioneering new pilot service programs. Um, and uh, we work with all sorts of nonprofit vendors uh, who are already working with nonprofits on specific service offerings. Um, and you can find all these service offerings again in the navigation under the services section right here. And you'll see a whole host of different uh, service options there. I, I'm going to focus on a few here that have proven over time, again, to be, I think, what we would call like the most popular ones. Um, but by all measure, you should take a look at those. And uh, there may be something else in there as well that that would be interesting to you. Um, I'm going to start with the fact that, you know, while not all nonprofits have actual IT professional staff, many do. And uh, we have some pretty technical services that are really designed to support those nonprofit IT staff in particular, even if they have other jobs that they do in addition to IT. Um, our help desk service is one of the most popular. Um, you know, as the name suggests, it's basically a service where, you know, we try to help you with whatever it is that you're having trouble with. Um, and uh, a basic cost parameter around that is you could do, you can get a help desk support for a single device for about $35 a month. Um, there's also a, an annual plan for about $350. Um, and there's other ways of pricing that help desk service as well. Um, but uh, I would encourage you, if you're thinking about the need for that, to go through the help desk menu on the navigation there. And you, know, you can start putting together an intake to talk to us about what you need help with. Part of the reason I like Help Desk um, is because we're nonprofit focused, being again a nonprofit ourselves. 
um, you know, it's very different than, for instance, if you try to get on help chat with like a giant multinational corporation, like, um, you know, somebody who's put together a big software package and you could stay in the help desk queue on, online with them for hours on, on end trying to get support. And, um, you know, our volume is not that. Um, and because we're focused specifically on helping nonprofits, often we can be a little more helpful, a little more friendly, and maybe even a little faster. Um, another very popular service offering we have, again, in the, in the spirit of cloud adoption, and in particular of nonprofits moving to that Microsoft 365 cloud productivity suite, um, is we can help, we have service to help you do that migration yourself because um, I'll be honest, it's not the easiest thing to execute on your own. You could do it on your own. And if you are a person who is very intuitive with tech and you feel very competent at uh, installing new systems and troubleshooting and getting things working, then you know by all means, take it a stab. But if you're somebody who really feels like you need some help, we can provide that help with the service offerings around Office 365. And again, I think uh, Kevin will touch on that a little bit later. Um, and then there's also a managed IT service, which you can think of as just a, it, it's not help desk where it's being responsive to just like there's a thing going wrong and we have to fix it. Managed IT service is more about let's look at the whole technology stack that your nonprofit is using. Let's talk about what the plan should be to keep things updated, managed correctly, functioning correctly. You know, in some way, it, it, it's sort of like outsourcing some of the IT work um, to other professionals who can help with that. Um, and then there's a fourth one that I thought would be fun to highlight here. TechSoup has something called a digital assessment tool, um, which, is a, which is a tool that nonprofits can go through to help them assess for themselves. And, and using this tool is free, by the way. You go through the tool and do an assessment of your nonprofit in several different topic areas to try to understand where are you on that digital adoption and digital path journey. Um, if, if you are pursuing digital transformation as a real thing at your nonprofit, um, that digital assessment tool can help you understand where are you on that path? Are you just at the beginning? Do you have some good things done already and you're kind of in the middle of the path or are you an advanced user really who's well down that path to digital transformation? Um, and these are things that your executive director would be thinking about. They are things that your board may be thinking about. Um, and you may even have access to some funding opportunities to help you um, as you pursue digital transformation. But that digital assessment tool, again, is available in that services drop-down menu. And I call it out because I think it's an interesting thing that nonprofits can take advantage of. Um, one of the other things that we've also learned over time is there's tremendous interest in nonprofits for support from a service orientation around communications and um, digital marketing. Anytime nonprofits have to talk to the public, to donors, to supporters, even to the press, and we're building websites and trying to make things look good. Um, there's a tremendous appetite for support on that. I already mentioned the Adobe products and the catalog around that, um, but we have in addition to that, some service offerings, one around website consultation and development. Um, and another is just a straight up digital marketing service that we offer with a partner. Um, and these, uh, these digital marketing services and website services are definitely a growing and more and more popular element of the service offerings at TechSoup. Um, we are also pioneering, but not fully releasing yet, um, a service to help nonprofits who are using the Google Ad Grant service. Um, and uh, there may be some folks on this call who are already using Google Ad Grants and, and good on you if you are. Um, if you're not yet using Google Ad Grants, I encourage you to look at it. The, the short story on that is that Google makes available to nonprofits up to $10,000 a month in, um, in free advertising in the Google search um, machinery. Uh, there are some 
parameters around how you can use that, including some limits, I think, on how much you can bid for those Google ads. And it may not fit every nonprofit or every situation a nonprofit faces, but it is a great offer from Google if it if it works for you. Um, and if you are already using it, um, you know, keep your eyes peeled for more uh, more coming from TechSoup about the service that we are beginning to pioneer around the Google Ad Grant service. Finally, in our service offerings, as I've been saying a few times now, it's the education and training piece of this, which nonprofits also find that they really need help with. Um, you've got new volunteers and new staff with a mix of technical skills, um, and uh, you can surely go online and Google around all sorts of courses. Um, many of them cost money, but the ones at TechSoup are a mixture of there are some lower level 100, 200 courses that uh, are free to take. And then there are some more technical higher end courses at the 300 level, which do have a fee associated with them. But the most important part I want to emphasize here is that these courses are all produced by TechSoup, created by TechSoup, and produced specifically with the needs of nonprofits in mind. Um, because we know nonprofits, because we are a nonprofit, we just understand that there's there's something a little different about how we do things. Um, and so these courses and trainings that we put together are really structured with nonprofits in mind, not just like the average small business. Um, we have those courses available in both English and Spanish at the moment. Um, there are more than 200 of them in the courses catalog. And um, yeah, to date, over 70,000 people have logged in and started working on one of those courses. Um, as I said, they are specifically designed for nonprofits. And one of the cool thing about the TechSoup courses catalog is, in fact, it's open to anybody. Um, any nonprofit staff can sign up to take a Google course. Um, you do not have to just specifically be a person who's authorized to purchase on behalf of a nonprofit, which is sort of how the rest of the software and hardware catalog really works. Um, and, uh, you know, the topics are most easily seen if you look at the courses platform itself. Um, but, you know, it's things like Excel, managing data, CRM, which is the customer relationship management platforms that nonprofits use, cybersecurity. You know, th there's an endless list of things that you can learn about in those courses offerings. Um, and then the final thing to highlight there is in particular in the courses, um, We've partnered again with Microsoft to create something called the Microsoft Digital Skill Center that is specifically focused on building skill sets around Microsoft products. There's some great um, content in there um, and definitely encourage you to take a look at that as well. And again, this is a live link in the webinar. You know, I'm pointing to the side as if you can see my screen the way I can, but um, you, can, uh, you can click on that link once you get a copy of the deck and that'll take you straight there. Um, this is a quick view of what some of those course titles could be. There's project management, Excel 201, you know, uh, we did a lot of stuff around organizing remote work and remote teams, which remains a pretty important topic for nonprofits. Um, but lots, lots of interesting stuff in there that's worth looking at. So with that, I'm going to now turn it over to Kevin Mohal, who is one of our super accomplished um, customer success folks here at TechSoup. Um, and uh, Kevin's going to do a little bit of a deeper dive um, for a couple of minutes into uh, the Microsoft Cloud stuff that I touched on briefly. And so uh, take it away, Kevin. I'll jump to the next slide here. Okay, thank you, Nick. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today. Again, my name is Kevin Mohal. And I'm a technical customer success manager here at TechSoup. For those of you that may not be familiar with customer success, we are a relatively new department, just over a year old, that works directly with organizations to help unpack complex technical needs and supports for those invested in not just 365, but the entirety of our vendor par partner catalog. Before beginning, I'd like to start with a quick poll question. Rita, if you could. Yeah, one moment. Are you able to see it? Yes. So the question here is, is your organization currently using Microsoft or Office 365? There's no obligation to answer this, of course. Uh, we'll give it about a half a minute to field some results here.
It's looking around 70% ish. Okay, this is actually a little bit higher than I thought um, we'd get from this. This is very exciting. Perfect. Well, thank you. So I'm going to jump over here to the next slide. As you can see, uh, we have a breakdown uh, between the various 365 subscription types. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to dive fully into all the items on the chart, but I do want to bring up one distinct difference uh, between the various types. Uh, for those of you that uh, were part of the know, um, that are the traditional Office desktop application suite users, uh, in order to continue using the full desktop version within the cloud, you will need to uh, move to a uh, platform of called a hybrid uh, license type. Uh, some examples of this subscription type include Office 365 E3, Business Standard, Business Premium, and the Microsoft Enterprise 3 or 5 offers. If your organization is able to operate without the need for a full version, a web-based option such as Business Basic or E1 might be the right, free, right option for you. I'd also like to draw a quick attention to the last item on the slide, Microsoft Azure. For those interested in furthering their use of the Microsoft Cloud, there is a $3,500 yearly grant nonprofits are eligible for. With over 200 different services available as a part of Azure, it's definitely something we recommend that you look into. Next slide, please. So getting your Microsoft Cloud. For those interested and ready to begin the journey toward accessing Microsoft Cloud solutions, there is a three-step process. First, you'll need to create an account at the Microsoft nonprofit portal. Next, you'll need to have that account validated. Validation service is provided on the back end by both TechSoup and Microsoft, and typically takes between five and seven business days to process. And the final part of introducing will be uh, what's referred to as the cloud manager or cloud manager tool to an authorized individual's account. This CSP introducing will allow you to access, will allow you access to the storefront where you're able to purchase licensing. If you find yourself stuck in any part of the process, we do have a team at the ready to assist via chat as shown in the bottom right corner of the screen. Next slide. Understanding a move to the cloud can be a challenge for organizations. We offer a free consultation service. During your session with us, you'll be able to assist you with registration, choosing the appropriate subscription licensing, provide recommendations for services, courses, and license implementation, along with ongoing support to you at no cost. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Kelly. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Garrett. I'm the Associate Manager for the Client Services Department. Um, client Services is usually who you'll be speaking with when you reach out for support. Our account management group is the group that handles day-to-day um, -day phone calls, emails, um, they provide support, you know, on getting you registered, getting you qualified as an eligible 501c3 nonprofit, <clears throat> and then can answer some basic questions about the products and services that are offered on our website. Um, <clears throat> we do also have several other teams in our client services department, which you probably won't interact with them at quite as much, but we do have a validation services team that handles registrations um, for Google for nonprofits, Microsoft for nonprofits, basically the places that have portals where you're going to our partners um, to get registered and validated and get access to certain products and services that are not necessarily on our website. Um, we also have a qualification eligibility team that they help with um, any eligibility questions. You know, we do make sure we review um, what your organization does, how your organization accomplishes that. 
And basically that will determine your eligibility for certain um, products and programs. Um, our corporate partners do have their own philanthropic focuses. So not every organization is going to be avail um, eligible for every single product and service available um, through TechSoup. It is something that our partners dictate to us on who they're looking to serve, how they're looking to serve them. Um, so things along the lines of what your mission is, what your budget is, sometimes your location as well. So some of the products can be geolocked. Um, if you do have any um, or organization activities outside of the United States, I highly recommend checking out um, the partner in your country that will be able to serve your branch or location or organization you're supporting out there. This is strictly for US only or based organizations only. So again, some of the products can be geolocked and it is important to make sure that you're going to the right provider in the right country um, that is partnered with TechSoup. So um, a lot of questions came in the chat. So about how do I figure out, you know, the admin fee? How do I figure out the renewal? How do I figure out this? And so where you want to go to find this information is you always want to go to the product page. So the way you can navigate that is you can either go to the product catalog. You'll see that highlighted um, up here at the top of the page, product catalog. And then you'll see that there's um, on the top left side, there is donor company category and hardware. These are great places to start um, where you can pick from different companies. If there's a specific company you're interested in like Zoom, Quick, Intuit for QuickBooks, um, things along those lines. Category is a great place to go if you're kind of looking for a type of product, but you haven't picked what company you're trying to work with or get their software for. And of course, hardware self-explanatory. Hardware is going to be where you can go to get um, refurbished hardware products. And we do have new hardware products available in there as well. So once you've located a product or service that you are interested in, um, this product here is the um, Help Desk Single Issue Tech Support Fix Service. You want to make sure that you're going to check all three of the tabs on the product page. And I do realize it can kind of blend in there a little bit. It's something we're aware of, um, but it is the description on the left. The middle tab can change. Um, it's either details and service costs. We also have um, subscription details you'll see in that middle tab and system requirements. It kind of depends on what type of product it is. It will de determine what the middle tab um, reads as. Then on the far right there is the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. So for any reason you're trying to check out and it's telling you you're not eligible, this is a great place to go to see what are the eligibility requirements, why am I getting this notification. Um, something else also maybe check before um, you move forward with um, your planning on what you want to request or not, something to definitely keep in mind. So for products that are one-time admin fees, you're going to usually see um, system requirements in the middle tab. It's not usually details and service costs or subscription details, but that is where you would want to go is the de details and service costs will always have the details on how do I keep this going? Is it a perpetual license? Is it not? And so that's where I like to send folks to. So for example, um, if you were someone mentioned DocuSign, there's three different DocuSign products in the DocuSign for nonprofits um, program. Um, one of them you'll see is a perpetual license, and that is the DocuSign Standard Edition. There is not going to be any continuing service listed underneath the subscription details tab. Um, in the DocuSign Business Pro Edition, one year initial subscription access to discounted rates, it's an access to a discounted rate. So that means that you're going to be going through, and sorry, there isn't a slide for this. This is something that we'll include in future slides. Um, but basically that's going to have a continuing service after one year listed there. So I always recommend making sure you're checking that, that middle tab that's got a lot of detailed information that's not necessarily going to be on the landing page here. You'll see it always starts on the description tab and the description tab is going to have a lot of good information, but to get in the real nitty gritty of it, always go to that middle tab and double check what the details and service costs are, and that should outline everything for you. So say you've gone there, you've looked at everything, you're still a little confused on what's going on or what you're paying or what you need to do for the next steps. That's when you can always reach out to um, TechSoup's customer service. Um, <clears throat> to re uh, reach us, you will click the help button in the top right corner, as you can see is in red box in the top right corner with the arrow pointing to it. Once you click there, you're going to come to this landing page of what do you need help with? Um, there's some great links to different trending topics that we have here. You'll also see next, um, there's a frequently asked question blue bar underneath that, what do you need help with? You can click on that to go to our FAQ. 
But to get in touch with us, you'll scroll to the bottom here, as you can see in this um, screenshot again in the red box at the bottom. And there's a couple different um, options for where you can go for support. Um, if you have any uh, press related questions, we have a PR team that you can reach out to. Um, our mailing address is there. If there's any reason you need to um, reach out to us um, or send something to us by mail. But the customer support one at the bottom there is where you'll click. And when you click on there, you will get taken to a contact us page. So um, two options are you can submit a contact us form that will come to us as an email and we will reply to you within one to three business days on average. Um, we were having a backlog for quite a while, but we are caught up now. So that email dis uh, disclaimer at the top of the page here is being taken down right now because we're finally caught up. Um, a lot of Microsoft changes created a huge amount of interest that we had to catch up on, but we are back in the one to three business day range for communications. So filling out the form will allow you to get an email back. We also now have chat features on different pages around the website. You'll see the chat listed there in the bottom in the little orange blurb. Um, you click on that and that will get you in touch with somebody. Um, at the bottom of this page is also our phone number. You're welcome to give us a call um, if you prefer to talk to us over the phone. Um, our Phone hours are from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so a much smaller window where email and chat we're usually answering between about 7 to 5 p.m. every day. So email and chat all day long, we're answering those. Phones is a much more limited time for contacting us. So highly recommend using our chat feature. It's fairly new and we're really excited about it because we're able to kind of communicate with you um, in live time. Um, so this is where you can definitely get support for um, any of your questions you have about the products or things like that. Um, next slide, please. So something to keep in mind is client services. Um, that's our customer service um, is what we can and cannot do. So because we have so many partners with so many products and services, which is wonderful, our team isn't able to become um, experts in all of the products available. These are the same products that are available in the retail market. So if say you had a question, like I had someone asking questions about how to um, create units in their QuickBooks software, that's a little bit outside of what um, TechSoup's, te uh, TechSoup's customer service is able to answer. Um, we can tell you how to check out with the product on our website. We can go through the product page information that's there. We can give you some of the th like, uh, FAQs that Intuit's passed on to us, but if you have any like support questions, if you have some in-depth product questions, it's always best to go back to the partner who provided it. So for QuickBooks, that would be Intuit um, and ask them anything about their, uh, their product because their team, their support team is going to be able to answer more in-depth questions because they're trained on this. They only have the one product to focus on. They don't have to learn about all of these different products that are out there. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you have account management questions, you have questions about your eligibility, you have questions about navigating our resources or the product page information that you're seeing, definitely reach out to us at the customer service, which is part of our client services team, and we'll be able to assist you with that. If you're asking for download and installation support, if you need IT support, if your computer's crashed and you need help with someone bring that back up, that's when you want to, you want to look at one of our services offers that ha will connect you with an IT professional that can assist you with that. The TechSoup customer support, you don't want me trying to fix your computer. I'm telling you right now, like, all I know how to do is to restart my computer and clear my cache and cookies for my browser. Past that, I've, you know, I've never installed in uh, QuickBooks. I've never installed Office on a desktop, things along those lines. So that's when you really want to think about going to the partner, see if they have any free resources, free support available for installation, product functionality, things along those lines. And then if they maybe want to charge you a fee, that's when you probably want to come back and check out those uh, TechSoup services, which will connect you again to an IT professional that is trained and able to provide remote support. Um, I've heard lots of great things about um, our help desk services. And it's one of those things that if you buy the help desk service, figure out the issue on your own and you never actually use it, you're more than welcome to come back for us and request a refund for the services product. Um, it's one of those things that if you didn't use it, services, we can confirm that and we can cancel the service request and move on. 
For other products and services, I highly recommend really making sure you want to request that product before you do. Um, most of our corporate partners have a strict no refunds, no exchange policy. So it is something that I would make sure your IT is prepared for setting up or you have an IT professional that's ready to help you to go or you yourself have gotten training on how you're going to get a product or service going because a lot of our partners do restrict that since it's really hard for us to recoup licensing once it's gone out to organizations. And that means other eligible nonprofits then can't get access to that licensing because it's already been used or it could still be getting used even though it's been refunded. So it's just something to keep in mind, really review those product um, pages on TechSoup.org, talk to the partner before you request anything. And you know, always welcome to reach out to TechSoup's customer service and ask us any questions that you want clarified from, you know, from what you've seen on the product page. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, and uh, that that brings us to the end of today's uh, presentation. Um, and, and I want to say thank you to everybody for joining and, and just learning more about, um, you know, how you can take advantage of TechSoup. I, I think at the end of the day, the, the thing I'd like to reinforce to everybody is um, TechSoup really is a community of people. Um, you know, it's very easy to, to look at big technology companies and, and you kind of, you get blinded by the tech and you don't see the human beings behind it. But, but TechSoup is very much the reverse of that. It is some of the most wonderful people I've worked with in my career um, and folks who really, really do care about nonprofits and about the work that nonprofits do, which is why they're working at a nonprofit themselves. Um, and, and one thing I'll say is that you're never going to get the hard sell at TechSoup and we're never going to just suddenly conclude, oh, somebody's not paying for something and so we're not going to talk to them. Like that is not at all what our mission is about. We're about being here to support you. So um, please never hesitate to reach out, use that catalog, ask the questions that are in your mind, um, take a look at the courses and educational offers that are on that uh, on that courses platform um, and, uh, and know that we really are here to help. Like we're going to engage with you. We're going to have those conversations. We're going to help you as best as we can. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end, our goal is to support you. And that's why that was the name of this webinar. Um, and with that, I will bring it to an end. Thank you very much, everybody. Watch in your email for the deck that you will receive after this. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you on, on your next steps with TechSoup. Have a great day. Bye-bye.